Hello and welcome to Radio Gagan. I'm Molly and I'm very pleased to be joined by the Member of Parliament for South West Hertfordshire, Gagan Mahindra. Gagan, how are you? Oli, I'm, I'm really well, thanks for asking. Good. Um, this is our first podcast where today we'll be discussing Gagan's activity in Westminster and in South, ha- South West Hertfordshire in the last month, as well as other contemporary issues and topics. So Gagan, to kick things off, can you tell our listeners what you've been up to in Westminster in the last month? Well, I've had a, another really busy month in SW1. Uh, I've been able to speak in nine separate debates, uh, but there's been a real focus on planning because that remains a big issue in my constituency, South West Hertfordshire. Uh, managed to ask the Secretary of State, Michael Gove, uh, about planning reform. I've had a tea room surgery uh, with the new Housing Minister, Rachel McLean, who I previously worked with mm-hmm. when we were in the Department of Transport. Um, and I've got um, been contacted a lot by some contentious local planning applications, so I'm working behind the scenes on that as well. Brilliant stuff. Well, it, it sounds like you've been busy. Um, talking of busy, uh, the Prime Minister and his negotiating team have been negoti- negotiating with counterparts in the EU, and they're pleased to have agreed upon the Windsor framework. Um, I know it's only been out for a week or two, um, but what are your initial thoughts on the deal? I think it's a really good deal. Um, I do think the Prime Minister and my boss, the Foreign Secretary, and um, Chris Heathenhouse and the Northern Ireland Secretary have really pulled this one out of the bag. Uh, when I got elected back in December 2019, there was a real focus on Brexit, um, we voted to to leave the European Union within the first uh, five, six weeks of my election. Um, but we always knew this was going to be a, a journey to getting uh, a better working relationship with the EU. And I think what um, the EU have found with Rishi as a new Prime Minister is actually someone that they can really work closely with, but also understand that he's a, a, a true Brexiteer. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've actually got a really good deal. And um, I know from the feedback I've had with colleagues and my constituents... Um, a lot of people are now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, irrespective of how you voted back in June 2016. Yeah, uh, um, so Rishi's announced his five key priorities um, that he's aiming to tackle this year. Um, We've just spoken about um, renegotiating our relationship with the European Union. In the last few days, um, one of Rishi's main priorities has been tackling the small boats that has been quite prevalent within the news. Um, And yesterday, Rishi and the Home Secretary, Sawala Braverman, um, introduced the Illegal Migration Bill to Parliament. What are your initial thoughts um, on the legislation that's being brought forward? It's another one that needs to be addressed and dealt with. Um, I think we've all been shocked when we see uh, illegal immigrants literally dying on the shores of Dover trying to get across the short straits from France. None of us want to see that. Um, I know we've tried multiple different ways of trying to solve this and break the business model of these uh, uh, modern traffickers. Uh, nothing to date has really worked. Um, I think this is going to be a really good and effective piece of legislation where uh, people from throughout the world are, are no longer incentivized to even make that really risky journey uh, in the hope that they will come onto the UK shores and stay here. Great. And um, you referenced the role um, of your boss, um, Foreign Secretary James Cleverley, um, during the uh, negotiation with the, with the EU um, officials recently. Um, so one of your roles is, um, as well as being an MP, um, is being the par- Parliamentary Private Secretary. Not many people, I imagine, probably know what that role entails. Would you be able to tell the listeners what that involves? Absolutely. Uh, apologies for the bell. We are in Parliament uh, to any listener listening in. Um, the role of the private parliamentary secretary is uh, I'm the main liaison between other MPs across the political spectrum and the foreign secretary. Uh, it's a way for MPs who are new to parliament, uh, new to departments, to get some experience with the hope that one day I'll get a tap on the shoulder to say, actually, we want you to serve uh, in government on the front bench as a, a minister or whip. Um, it's a really, really good way to understand how depart- different departments work. You know, I've spent one year in Department of Transport, one year in the Home Office, and now about six months in the Foreign Office. Each department's been really different, but also the personalities within them, uh, the Ministerial colleagues, but also the, the Civil Service. Uh, I'm really relishing the, the challenge because um, what I've really found really interesting is being in the room when colleagues speak to the Foreign Secretary about different parts of the world because it's a really quick and easy way for me to learn about global politics. That's great. And we've spoken about Westminster, what you've been up to and the most contemporary issues. Um, but I'm sure a lot of our, the listeners will be interested to know what you've been up to in the constituency. Um, are you able to tell us um, what you've been doing in the constituency this month? It's been a, another busy month. Um, now, the one 
thing that I don't have, and which every open people probably give you the same answer, they don't have much of is free time. Um, I've got a thousand important things to do, and juggling um, what to prioritise on any day of the week is is really um, quite a quite a uh, a skill that I'm, I'm learning, um, but I'm getting better at. Um, my job gives me the opportunity to do things that no other job can do, uh, but it, it really is a seven day a week job if you choose it to be. Um, so Monday to Thursday, all as you know, that I'm normally in Parliament, uh, creating, helping create legislation. Um, Friday, Saturday, and then sometimes Sunday, I do constituency stuff. Um, I do commute in, so I'm able to do constituency stuff Monday mornings as well. Um, the last few Saturdays and Sundays, I've had everything from helping to launch Burko Half Marathon last Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, we went to the, the Three Rivers District Council Chairman's Ball, I think that was last Friday. Um, I've done some walkabouts on some of the local high streets. Um, one of the themes we had was uh, talking to those in the healthcare system, mm -hmm. but not yep. just doctors, but, but dentists and opticians and pharmacies, just to get a better understanding of... of what they're seeing on, on the front line and, and the more information and more knowledge they are able to pass on to me the better my quality of conversation is with with ministers when i get the opportunity to do so uh, i always say that whenever i speak to constituents they like to be the expert in their field so um, the skill of of any politician is more about listening and uh, understanding it on how best they can have a positive impact that's that's what i try to do every every day brilliant um and as part of your way of speaking with constituents and helping them with issues you hold a range of different surgeries so that's um in person virtual and face to face um this month you've welcomed um members from chorleywood residents association um, as well as afghan refugees from the patch um as well as members from the rickmansworth u3a group um, yeah, all, what came did, to, all came to parliament so yeah what did you learn from those meetings um what it does do is reinforce how wonderful place I work in because looking at their faces when they walk around Westminster Hall or uh, the rest of the palace, um, while I've never taken this place for granted, I sometimes forget how amazing my workplace is. Uh, when I come out at Westminster Tube Station every day after commuting from Trink, uh, looking up and seeing Big Ben, I still get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. um, sitting yep. on the green benches is still a massive honour. Um, I do feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, but I, I'm confident in my abilities. I absolutely do deserve to be here at the same time. Excellent stuff. Um, and was one of one of your surgeries you had recently um, in Chorleywood, and you met um, Bidori Patel and her daughter Kia. Yes. Um, how have you been able to um, represent their views, um, whether that be in Parliament um, or um, with local third authorities? Um, well, I was able to uh, bring up. Uh, Kaya's case with um, Michelle, um, with Gillian Keegan, the Education Secretary uh, yep. Department of Questions, because um, as you're probably well, um, I was a governor of an artistic school before I became an MP, so yep. CEN is really uh, one of my personal passions, and Hertfordshire does need to do a lot more. Um, now, I'm working closely with Richard Roberts, the leader of, of Hearts County Council, on this, but it is uh, a multi-agency multi, multi um, response required on this, because um, one of my biggest passions is making sure people fulfil their potential, whatever that is. Yep. Um, so um, hopefully I'll be able to help Kaya uh, and many others like her. Brilliant. Um, so that's all for today. That's great. Um, and thank you very much for your time, Gag. And as you said, I know you're extremely busy. <laughs> so I greatly appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us. Uh, moving forward, we'd love to have questions from listeners. Um, so if you do have any questions or ideas for the podcast moving forward, um, please do email Gagan at his email address of gagan.mahindra.mp at parliament.uk. Um, for more information on Gagan's activity, um, please do visit his website at www.gaganmahindra.org.uk as well as checking out his Facebook and Instagram um, to keep up to date with what he's up to. Thank you very much for listening.